Thank you for joining us for another power-packed message provided by Monroe Global Incorporated and MonroeGlobal.com. We transform followers into leaders and leaders into agents of change. We hope that this message is a blessing to you as you advance your life and discover your purpose. Now, let's go into the message. I want to talk about this segment, Jesus and Kingdom Diplomacy. Jesus and Kingdom Diplomacy. Or, another way of putting this, Jesus and Understanding Ambassadorship. We're dealing with the subject of the Kingdom of God. The most important subject in the world is the Kingdom of God because it's the only message that Jesus preached. Jesus never preached born again. He never preached healing. He never preached prosperity. He never preached deliverance. He never preached those things. The only thing that Jesus preached, if you check the four Gospels, he had one message, and that was the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven has arrived. So according to Jesus, his approach was, you don't seek healing, you don't seek deliverance, you don't seek money, you don't seek prosperity. You seek this thing that he preached, this, this subject called the kingdom of God. As a matter of fact, one time his disciples began to worry about what they will eat what they will drink, what they will wear, and where they will live. And he stopped them in the book of Matthew 6, and he said to them, Why do you worry what you will eat, what you will drink, what you will wear, how you will live? He says, Pagans worry about those things. Now the word pagan is not a word that means an atheist. The word pagan is the name you gave to a religious person. It's very important. In other words, the Romans were not atheists. The Romans were worshippers. They worshipped many gods. They were polytheists. The Greeks were not atheists. They worshipped many gods like Apollos. And they worshipped all Eros and all these other gods. These were religious people. Everybody around Jesus was religious. So he's, they are called pagans. A pagan is a religious worshipper. He said to his disciples, you are just like religious people you are worrying about what you will eat what you will drink what you will wear and how you will live could you imagine when you pray for those things Jesus calls you a pagan but then he goes on to say your father knows you have need of those things so why do you worry about those things then he says in verse 36 he says seek ye first the kingdom of God Wow. He said, don't seek food and clothing and, and, and house and land. He says, seek first what? The kingdom of God and is righteousness. Righteousness means to be rightly positioned with someone. So he says, seek first the kingdom of God and its righteousness. And all of these things that religious people pray for will be added to you without you even praying well why did he say that because he preached kingdom what's a kingdom the word kingdom is a word given to a governing authority that has power and influence so a kingdom is not a religion that's why he says religious people pray for those things he says a kingdom is a king with a dominion king dominion it is a government that has authority over a domain so the kingdom of heaven is is the domain of the government of God and he says he wants that to come to earth he wants earth to be governed by heaven's governing authority so really the whole thing about God is about government it's not about religion it's about ruling it's not about you know all this rituals we go through God never wanted servants he wanted sons he never wanted uh, rituals he wanted rulership he wanted us to have dominion over the earth so the reason why God created man is to execute his kingdom dominion on the earth to extend his government to the earthly environment that is the reason why God created you you were created not to sit in churches like this and spend hours trying to get into God's presence and worshiping and singing all this stuff that was not God's original plan this is what I call a repair program. He's trying to repair us to get back into the groove of rulership and leadership. 
So the reason why Jesus came to earth is found in the first chapter, uh, I mean the, 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 uh, the fourth chapter of Matthew. Very important public statement I always refer to. And I keep going back because you can't improve on truth. You don't invent truth. You got to keep referring to it. Matthew 4 verse 17 says, And from that time forward, Jesus began to preach. What does he preach? It says, quote, Repent, comma, because the kingdom of heaven has arrived. Full stop. That was his introduction message. Repent. Repent means to change your thinking. Why? Because a governing authority from heaven has arrived on earth again. In other words, Jesus came to establish a governing agency on earth that used to be here when Adam was in the garden, but he lost it and he came to restore that. So the entire program of God is to re-establish his kingdom of heaven on earth. So that when they asked Jesus in Matthew 6, how should we pray? His answer was simple. He says, here's what to pray for and here's how to pray all the time. He gave them a model. He said, now don't pray for things, just pray for this. Our Father, who is not on earth, where is he? In heaven. Holy is your name. Then he says, pray this. Thy kingdom come and thy will or intentions or purpose be done on earth just like it is in heaven. He says, pray that. In other words, our entire life should be pursuing the influence of heaven on earth. To get what's happening in heaven to happen on earth. To do that, the government of heaven needs to set up ambassador and agencies and diplomatic centers in the world. So the whole thing about God is to set up representatives on earth to represent heaven and then to make what's happening in heaven happen on earth through the execution of God's government authority. That's why the word church, the word ecclesia, doesn't mean religious group. It means chosen or called out ones to execute legislation. It's a very simple word, ecclesia. Ecclesia was what the Romans established to represent Rome all over the world. Matter of fact, that's why Rome was so successful as a government. It was the most successful government for 200, 200 years because it established agencies all over the Europe. And they were able to execute what was happening in Italy all over the world to make the world just like Rome. That's why they say when in Rome you do as the Romans do. That means whenever you enter a territory that was ruled by Rome, you became a Roman automatically. Christ says, I will build my ecclesia just like Caesar did his. I will build mine on the fact that I am the Lord of my kingdom. I am the Christ, the Son of God. And from that anointing and from that authority, I'm going to establish my ecclesia on the earth. And the gates of hell cannot stop its expansion. The word hell there means grave. It means that this kingdom is more powerful than death. When you kill the citizens, they come back. Everybody say resurrection. Praise the Lord. That's the kind of kingdom we live in. So the entire purpose of God is to set up representations. Now when a government sets up representations to represent itself, these people are usually called ambassadors. An ambassador is not a member of parliament. An ambassador is not a senator. An ambassador is not a member of, of, of some you know, uh, uh, political organization that's voted in by people. An ambassador has more power than all the people in, 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 in the uh, members of parliament or in the senate. An MP represents a constituency of people. He doesn't represent the country. A senator is appointed for a period of time and they represent a persuasion of a party. But an ambassador doesn't represent a constituency, nor a party. An ambassador represents the entire nation. They embody the entire country. So when you meet an ambassador, you are actually meeting a nation. You know, when you shake hands with a, a member of parliament, you don't need to bow. But if you shake hands with an ambassador, it's required that you bow. You have to show what they call diplomatic courtesy. You are meeting a country. You got to show respect to the entire nation. That is why ambassadors don't get attacked by people. When you slap an ambassador, you're not slapping a person, you're slapping a country. If I slap an MP, it's called an assault. But if I slap an ambassador, it's called an international incident. You'll get it after I'm gone. 
In other words, when the devil harasses you, he ain't fooling with an individual. That's why I have no fear of anybody when I travel around the world. Why? If you touch me, you're going <laughs> to provoke an entire government, an entire nation is going to come against you. When Paul was harassing the saints, Jesus showed up and knocked him off his horse, shone a light in his face on the ground and said, Saul, why persecutest, he took it personal, thou me. The king says you are persecuting me. Now you don't want to get the king mad. Tell your neighbor, I look like I'm alone. But we are many. <laughs> Hallelujah. He that touches you, touches heaven. An ambassador, please turn with me to the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5. This is not religious stuff. This is kingdom stuff. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Very important verse I want to just reiterate. And it is about your representation responsibility. Verse 16, so from now on we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is what? A new creation. The old has gone away, the new has come. And this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Interesting. Keep reading. Verse 19. Then God, that was, that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting men's sins against them. And he has committed to us, that's you, Ecclesia, the called out ones, the message of what? Reconciliation. That's good news. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors. Everybody the ambassadors thank God we are ambassadors of Christ as though God were making his appeal through us we implore you on Christ's behalf therefore be reconciled to God God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become what the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus what a powerful powerful statement now just a quick review of this number one it says that God was in Christ what reconciling the world and said the word reconciled that is really not a word it's a grammatical construct it's a word and a prefix put together if you look at the word reconcile write it down it has a prefix re then the word is concile to concile means to make one when you go to a bank and you take all your bills and make them one they call it consolidation to consolidation means to make something one to bring it back together in one the Bible never says God was in Christ consoling the world to himself it says God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. Re means to go back to the original position. The word prefix means, re means to go backward to the original state. So if God says he is reconciling you to him, he is saying we used to be together. <laughs> Something broke us apart and I came to put us back together. So God was in Christ what? Re-wanting us with himself, reconciling us, consolidating us again with him. You used to be with God. So you are not a, uh, uh, you know, you are not some alien to God. You are kids coming back home from the pig pen. Thank God for a good father. He was reconciling the world to himself. Now, he did that through the work that Christ did on the cross to redeem us, cleanse our sins, wash us clean, so we can come back to God in his presence without being condemned. But then watch what he says. He says, now he has given unto those who came to him, he's given unto them the same ministry. The ministry of what? Reconciling people back to God. So your number one goal is not to fight people, fuss people, beat people, tell them hell can kill them and all that stuff. Your job is to tell them you can come back to the Father. You can come, it's good news. You can be restored back to your dominion, to your power, to your authority again. You can become an ambassador like me. 
That's good news. And then he says, we are ambassadors of Christ. Let's talk about ambassadors a minute. And I promise to re 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 review this with you for a moment. I want you to take your pen and write this down. Understanding what ambassadors are like. Number one, ambassadors are chosen by the king or the ruler. Ambassadors are never voted in. And that's so important. Because if you had to wait for us to vote you to become a part of God's kingdom, you'd never make it. There are more of us who don't like you than who like you. Hope you all know people don't generally, generally like you. You know that by now, right? Come on, I mean, don't look at me funny. I want you to get used. Listen, don't go around expecting everybody to like you. Most of them don't. Even them sitting behind you. They're talking about your head right now. The people who know your past, my God, they will never vote for you to become a man or woman of God. You would never make it into the kingdom of God if they had to vote for you. Even in the church, you wouldn't, you wouldn't win the election to get in the church. Some people you throw out, God already got them in his church. Some folks you throw out, they're still in God's church. Ambassadors are chosen by the king. Secondly, ambassadors are appointed to represent the state, only the state. And I said the state. The state. An ambassador cannot represent two countries. I'm going to show you in a minute in scripture where that is true even in the kingdom of God. You cannot represent two countries. You can only represent one country as an ambassador. Now you, can, you can represent your country to many countries, but you cannot represent more than one country. You represent the state. Also, remember, you represent the state. You don't, re you don't represent your personal family. Thirdly, ambassadors are committed only to the interests of their state. An ambassador doesn't carry his personal opinions around with him and make them public. His only interest is his kingdoms or his state's interests. By the way, that is why an ambassador is completely paid for. Because he embodies the state. This is a very important statement. An ambassador embodies the state, meaning that when a person becomes an ambassador, they literally become a country. They become the personification of a nation. The Bible says you are an ambassador of heaven, an ambassador of Christ, which means when people meet you, they are literally meeting all of heaven. Young man, when you go to school, heaven's going to school. When you walk in your classroom, heaven is sitting in the classroom. You represent the entire government of God. When you go in your job in the morning, you embody the very kingdom of God. Next, ambassadors only speak government's positions. This is very critical, very important. An ambassador never speaks his mind. An ambassador doesn't ex expose his personal views. He never tells you his personal opinions. It's illegal for an ambassador to tell you what he thinks. Illegal. You know, it's interesting that an ambassador in the time of Caesar was called the Senate. The Senate was Caesar's cabinet. The words have changed a little bit now. The cabinet of Caesar could not speak their mind. They could only speak what Caesar said. A cabinet minister today cannot speak his, his mind, can he? Any cabinet minister today who has his own opinions will be thrown out of the government. No matter what he personally thinks, when he comes in public, he got to say what the government says. Otherwise, he kicked out of the cabinet. That's what an ambassador is. An ambassador has a responsibility to only speak government's positions. So therefore, the number one job of an ambassador is to study the government's position on every issue. Hold your Bible up, please. That book is the kingdom's constitution. In that book is all of your government's views on every issue. 
whether it is homosexuality, whether it is lesbianism, whether it is fornication, whether it, whether it is lying or stealing or adultery, whatever issue comes up, that book tells you your position on it. So forget your private opinion. Otherwise, you are not an ambassador of heaven. What I like about that is, if you don't have your own personal opinion, then you don't have to take personal responsibility for what you say. You all missed it. I tell you, that's a blessing. I say that's a blessing. See, if you give them your opinion, you got to defend your opinion. But if you give them the government's opinion, they got to go argue with the government. And ain't nobody want to touch with God. I love what Jesus said when he was attacked by Lucifer. There he was in that desert. 40 years, no food. 40 days, rather, no food. And Satan attacks him. And Satan begins to play with his mind. Notice how he responded. He never gave his opinion. He said, it is written. And in every case, he simply quoted what was in the legislation. And the Bible says Satan left him. You know why Satan's still hanging around some of us? <laughs> We're discussing things. Someone asks you, well, what do you think about homosexuality? Tell them, I don't think about it, but i tell you what my government thinks. My government position is it's abomination. Now I take it up with the government. Or we can get personal, and they can argue and argue for days and never win an argument. Ambassadors never give their personal positions. Next, ambassadors are totally covered by the government. I love this. Now, this is tied to... Number three, the government only wants an ambassador to think about its interests. In other words, a government wants the ambassador to think about nothing else except what the government wants. That's all he wants you to think about. Follow me now. So they don't want you to, to be distracted by anything else. That's why the, when you become an ambassador, the government takes over your life. I would rather be an ambassador than to be an MP. Because an MP still got to pay his own rent, <laughs> pay his own gasoline, buy his own clothes, buy his own food, feed his own children, pay for his own tuition. I mean, you got to do all that stuff yourself. But an ambassador, whoo, good life. The minute you become an ambassador, the government takes over your life. They cover you. They pay for your house. They provide you with a maid. They give you all your food, your car, your gasoline. They even take care of your tuition for your kids. Even your sports are paid for. Your, your exercise programs are paid for. Your, everything you do is paid for by the government as an ambassador. That's why Jesus said it very clear. He says, you seek first the kingdom's interest, and all everything you need will be added. It comes with the job. Anybody want to be an ambassador of Christ today? <laughs> Ambassadors don't worry about whether the light's going to stay on. Pagans do. Religious people do. I'm giving you a message from God today. He wants you to start worrying about your phone bill from this day forward. If your phone calls are warranted by your position as a kingdom ambassador, then that's not your bill. Hello? Now, if you spend your long distance phone call calling up Psychic Line, that part ain't the ambassador. That ain't the kingdom's responsibility. Because he told you not to deal with mediums. Let's talk about it a minute. If you keep your light on, shocking up with somebody you're supposed to be living with, that light bill is your bill because the government said they don't pay for adultery and they don't pay for fornication. Come on, let's get it right now. That's why I said the bill's got to be valid. <laughs> You're using your computer all night, watching pornography for hours, and that electricity, the ambassador, that is not ambassador's responsibility. You're going to pay for that yourself. Mm-hmm. 
You use gasoline to go cruising around with someone who you ain't married to, shacking up on the beach with a young man, and, and using gasoline for that? God, you pay your own gasoline. That is not what I pay for. Anybody getting the message? The government pays for what it's responsible for. That's why the ambassador's life doesn't belong to him. It belongs to the government. Have you ever heard of any ambassador, and I want you to think about this now, being found in a disco somewhere? Never. Or drunk somewhere on some bar stool? Never. Why? Because if they're drunk, the country's drunk. When an ambassador has adultery, they commit adultery, the whole country's committing adultery. An ambassador doesn't just go anywhere. Whenever they go, there's an escort with them. You got one to call the Holy Ghost. He knows where you're going every time. Hallelujah. You're an ambassador. You are covered. He'll pay your bills, but you got to make sure you perform like an ambassador. Can I hear an amen, somebody? Say it loud. Amen. You got to live like an ambassador to be covered like one in Jesus' mighty name. So clean your life up. Today is the 30th. Good time to change. Praise God. An ambassador is totally protected by the government. Ambassadors, did you drive past the U.S. Embassy lately? They got guys with guns out there. They got a car parked across there. They got a police car there. They got some gates. They got all kind of wires. I mean, an ambassador is protected. You should see the stuff heaven got around you. Man, the Bible says he gave his angels charge concerning you. He didn't say angel. One angel, one angel, one of these guys caused the entire world to be set on fire. One of them. He just poured a veil on the earth. One of them. Imagine having five of them around you. One angel routed Pharaoh's army. One the angel of the Lord, it says the angel of the Lord, routed, found, that means one angel killed a whole nation. You got a few of them around you right now, on your way home today, and when you go to sleep, you know you ain't gonna have no problems. Come on, say amen, somebody. An ambassador is protected. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will what? Fear no evil, why? For thou art with me. Lift your hands and thank God you're protected. Ambassadors don't worry about their safety. That's the government's responsibility. Your home is safe right now in Jesus' name. I say your home is safe right now in Jesus' name. Now tell you somebody angels, so you, you got to tell them what to do. The Bible says they are ministering spirits sent forth to do the bidding of those who are heirs of salvation. You got to get a bid them what to do. So if you left home right now, I didn't tell them... To, you no, know, take your house. Better lift your hand right now. Point towards your house. Say, go in Jesus' name. Watch over my properties and all that concerns me. See, now they're gone. See, praise God. They're gone. Give the Lord a hand. Your, your, your country, your home is protected. Next, ambassadors never become a citizen of the state they are in. Boy, this is important. You're an ambassador of what? Heaven. Where do you live? on earth. Now this is important. Our citizenship, the Bible says, is not on earth. Our citizenship is in heaven. Now we, now we are living here, we reside here, but our citizenship is not from earth. Why is this important for you to understand as a believer in the kingdom? Because you see, if your citizenship is from earth, then you are as wealthy or as poor as the government on earth. A citizen is only as wealthy as its country. My Lord. Secondly, an ambassador reflects the wealth and the culture of his country, not the one he is in. Boy, I tell you, this blesses me. See, I used to be a Bahamian. <laughs> this is important. And I used to be black. 
I'm serious about this. Whatever you associate with, you are limited by. I used to be a Baintown boy. Used to be. But then I changed governments, changed citizenship, and therefore I changed access to everything I need. I am as wealthy and as safe and as protected as my country I am from. Now, the chapter we read a moment ago, the, the first verse we read sounded like this. Do not regard any man after worldly mind. Even though you used to, it says. But regard every man as from heaven, even as you've done Christ. Jesus never believed he was from earth. Never. The guy was crazy. I mean, his thinking was weird. He never acted like he was from earth. He saw 5,000 people. Everybody's hungry from earth. We broke from heaven. He says, feed them. Two different thinking patterns altogether. He stood before Pilate. Pilate says, I'm going to kill you. Christ says, you couldn't kill me unless you had permission from above. Pilate says, are you a king? He says, you got that right. I am a king and my kingdom is not of this world. What kind of thinking is this? Now it says, you must not regard anyone in the kingdom of God after worldly mindset either. So when you get a bill, which is the, you know, it's the last the end of the month for some of you. When you get your bill, I want you to go home, look at your bills and say, now according to worldly mindset, I can't pay all of these. So I got to tap into another government. And then you begin to read the manuscript. It says here in this great constitution, turn to section Philippians subsection 4 article 16. And it says, my God shall supply all of my needs. How? According to his riches where? In glory. See, if it's on earth, you're in trouble. Tell your neighbor, I got stuff you can't see. Tell your neighbor, I got stuff coming this week. I don't know where it's coming from. But it's going to find me. Clap your hands and shout for a second. Praise God. My source is not from my job. Come on, hallelujah. Your job is not your source. Say it. My job is not my source. Who's your source? God is my source. Jesus said, why do you worry what you will eat, what you will drink, what you will wear, how you will live? Watch this. He says, the Father knows. What's the word Father? Abba. What does it mean? Source and sustainer. If you tap into your kingdom source, you'll stop having headaches. High blood pressure, migraines, cysts, growths in your body, stress. Tap into your kingdom life today. This is good news. You can live in the earth and not be of the earth. Come on, talk to me. I am in this world, but not of this world. They told you it takes 25 years to pay your mortgage off. That is true if you live in the world. But in the kingdom, God can miraculously pay your mortgage off in four years. Oh, I know what I'm talking about. And the funny thing about the kingdom is, it doesn't happen until you believe it. You got to believe it first. If you believe, you don't need to spend 30 years paying the mortgage. If you believe that, then you'll find God cutting the years off, just like that. Folks will walk into your life and give you a check for 50000 God just told them to come and bless you. Why? Because you attracted it by your belief. But if you believe it's 30, then God will give it to you, you know, month by month. That's your belief. According to your faith, so be it unto you. How? According to your belief. If you believe it's 30 years, God will keep your belief going. You know, in Haiti, we have an ambassador. His mother attends this church. And I was talking to him one time, and he says, it's incredible. You go to Haiti, there's poverty all over the world, man, all over the place. Matter of fact, he said, Haiti is the poorest country in the Western world. 
He said, when you go in that country, there's people all around you. Some sleeping in the streets, some sleeping in old cardboard boxes, some of them along the streets just been in filth. I mean, it's tough in Haiti. And some of you Haitians here know what I'm talking about. It's very difficult in Haiti right now. And it's been that way for years. But you know, he says, it's incredible. He says the American ambassador is there, and the Bahamian ambassador is there, and the Chinese ambassador is there. All the Chinese and other ambassadors are there. He says that when you pass by our place, all the ambassadors' houses are beautiful houses, big walls, fine cars, limousines, BMW, Mercedes Benz. He says, and then when you walk inside our place, there's gardens and fountains, and, and there's all kind of lobster and fish and all the food you can eat right in the walls around the poverty. Right in the middle of the poverty is so much wealth. So I asked him, how can that be? He said, because we are not as poor as where we are positioned we are as rich as where we are from some of you are gonna get it in a minute when you walk into your job this week you must walk in that job as the king of the place now they don't know that yet but you are as great as where you are from so dress like you want to be addressed and talk like you want to be heard and live like you want to be lived and, and, and expected and respected and to be admired live a life that is worthy of the calling that's upon you you know everybody in neighborhood having problems except you why you ain't from their country Everybody in your home had a divorce except you. Why? You ain't from that country. You from another country. Your laws for marriage under different government. Everybody's children going wild, but not your kids. Your kids under a different country. We gotta think this way, otherwise our kids will be lost by the world. We live in another country. This next one here is very important here. And that is they can only be recalled by the king. Ambassadors cannot be fired by, by uh, cabinet. They cannot be fired by the Senate. They cannot be fired by the House Assembly or Congress. <laughs> I mean, no members of parliament get together and say, look, we don't like the ambassador, we fire him. You can't do that. The only person that can fire an ambassador is the one who appointed him. Tell your neighbor, you can't touch me. You didn't choose me. You know, there's some folks who want you to come out of the body of Christ? They just don't like you. You know, this thing with excommunication, I ain't too sure about who could do that. <laughs> you know, I'm, I, I don't know much about all the details, but I got a concern about this. The only person that can get rid of you is the one who chose you. And somehow Peter wanted to get rid of some people. Peter said to Jesus, look, I can't take no more. Get rid of that person. And Jesus said, Peter, in my government, you forgive. Peter says, how many times? Because <laughs> in my government, we got a long mercy list. Seventy times seven. How much that is? How much that is? 490 okay so that means you got 490 opportunities to be forgiven and then we might consider excommunication so before you dump anybody start counting one watch him again for a few years and two <laughs> Aren't you glad for the government's forgiveness? I say, you messed up so many times. You? Lift your hands and thank you for his forgiveness. Thank you, Lord, for your forgiveness. Hallelujah. By the way, thank you for the things folks will know about. Come on, just thank him. Them secret things that they don't know about. Just thank you for forgiving me. Praise God. Hallelujah. We got a good government. Yeah. This one here. Uh, the, the ambassador has access to all the nation's wealth and power. Very interesting. And an ambassador... His goal is to influence the territory for his government. I want to comment on this one before the last. Very interesting. You know, now this is, this is fact. I spoke with three ambassadors about this. 
I was in the office with one of them in London, one of our ambassadors in London, and on his, on his, on his desk he has uh, three telephones. One of the telephones is a green phone. The other telephones are, you know, tan and stuff. I said, what's that phone? He said, That's a, that phone, he said, that phone is, is a special phone. I said, why? He said, there's only one person that calls that on that phone. Only one person. Only one person has that number. I said, who? He said, it's the prime minister. He said, whenever that phone rings, I don't have to ask who it is. Now, the other phones, they're ringing all the time. He said, but that phone is a direct line to the prime minister's office. He said, every ambassador all over the world got this green phone, and it's a direct line to the PM. And only the prime minister can call on that line. I said, wow. He said, now, secondly, he says, no matter what happens in my life, I can never complain to the prime minister. In other words, if you were to call the prime minister and say, look, uh, my light bill is overdue, you'll be fired. Or you call the prime minister, look, uh, my kids need some clothes or some shoes, need some food, they will fire you immediately. Why? It's an insult to the government. Some of y'all are slow. When you tell God, I need some groceries. Now, I know I'm messing prayer life up now. When you tell God, I need some money to pay some light bills. God is saying, you're fired. Why? Christ says, why do you worry what you will eat, what you will drink, what you will wear? He says, pagans worry about these things. But do not worry about any of these because your father knows you need of these things all you worry about is seeking his kingdom's interest these things come with the job that's good news I say it's good news I said that's good news the word for good news is what gospel there's a green phone in every believer's life And you know when it rings. And some of you don't pick it up. It usually rings when you're just about to do something wrong. Can I hear an amen before I go? I mean, it usually rings when you're about to do something secretive. You're about to do something dumb. Something evil. Something sinful. It rings. And sometimes it rings loud. And you put a pillow over it, and you put blankets over it, and it still rings. And when you move the pillow, it's still ringing. I'm here to tell you, every time that phone rings, pick it up. Because the, the king of kings is on the line. Holy Ghost is the connection. He got something to say to the ambassador. And that phone going to ring all week, I'm telling you. It's ringing right now for some of you. He's telling you to go get your life right. You need prayer today. You need to ask me to forgive you. You need to clean that stuff up. You need to fix that thing in your life. In other words, it, it keeps ringing. In some people's lives, it's ringing all the time. The Holy Spirit is our green phone. When you pray in tongues, nobody could interrupt the conversation. That's why I pray in tongues. Praying in tongues is so important because praying in tongues is direct line to the government. He that prayed in an unknown tongue prayed unto God mysteries and no man understandeth him. If you ain't baptized in the Holy Spirit, I encourage you to seek that desire to be fulfilled today, to be filled with the Holy Spirit. When you don't know what to do, pick up the green phone and pray. That sometimes we don't know what we ought to pray for, it said, but the Spirit helpeth us in our infirmities. We're praying with what? Groanings that cannot be uttered. He helps us to get direct information. By the way, do you know what a prophet is? A prophet is a messenger that comes to the door. A prophet is not the grain phone. <laughs> the prophet is who God sends because you don't pick up the grain phone. He sends somebody into life and says, look, uh, you didn't pick up the phone, but here's what the phone was going to say. And then they prophesied to you. 
And you know what they're getting ready to say. Because prophecy is what? Only to confirm things you already know of. If someone tells you you're living in sin, you know that a long time ago. Phone was ringing a long time ago. You don't want to pick it up. So prophet comes to tell you what you're supposed to have known already. Let me just wrap up on some thoughts from Jesus. Look at John 15. This is going to be very important. Let's think about the things we listed just now. Number one. The ambassador is chosen by who? The king. Jesus said this about his kingdom. He says, you did not choose me, but I what? Chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit. Fruit that will last. Then the father will give you whatever you ask in my name. What a powerful blank check. He said, I, you didn't choose me. I chose you. You are appointed by Jesus himself to be his ambassador. And then he says, if you stay in my diplomacy, you will be able to ask anything you need and it shall be given unto you. Wow, what an open check. Jesus is an ambassador appointment. Look at John 16 verse 14. All that belongs to the Father, that is the source, is mine. That is why I said the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, will take from what is mine and make it known to you. What, is, what does he have? All. Where did he get it from? The Father. What did he, what did he say he, he's going to do with it? Give it to you. That's how ambassadors work. The ambassador is the person who the, who the government gave everything to and say represent all of us. Everything that belongs to Jesus belongs to you. See it there? You have access to everything he had access to. Powerful stuff. John 20 verse 21. It says, again Jesus said, peace be with you. Watch this. As the Father has sent me, now I'm sending you. I was his ambassador. You are now my ambassador. Whatever I had is yours. What a powerful thing to go into the week with. You should never, ever worry again about your future. And if you are not in the kingdom of God today, there's no wise reason to stay out anymore. I don't understand what your problem is. This is not religion. This is your life. If you don't have Christ in your life today as your Lord and your King, if He's not appointed you yet, then I will run and submit to Him. Why? You'll be covered by Him and everything you've been worrying about will now be His problem. That's the good news of the kingdom of God. So send I you. Look at this one. The life of the ambassador. Matthew 6, 24. No one can serve what? Two governments. Either he will hate the one and love the other. No one can serve what? Two masters. See, I told you. Once you become a part of God's kingdom, then God don't want you going around confusing people. In your workplace, do people know that you represent the kingdom of God or are you still slipping into that old kingdom? I mean, it, it, are they confused saying, uh, uh, are you a child of the devil or a child of God? I mean, on Monday you were doing fine, but today you're cussing, fighting, biting, killing people with your words. You are, you, you are so, so, so unlike God. You can't serve two countries. Jesus speaks again, Matthew 6, 20. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life. Do not worry about what? Your life. Ambassadors do not worry about their life. 
Don't worry what you will eat and what you will drink, about your body, what you will wear. Life is more than these. Man, that statement blew my mind there, Pastor. That last statement that blew my mind. I mean, I was thinking about that for about two days when I read that. Life is more than these. Are you serious? Hey, God, we live to make a living. I mean, how many of us live just to pay bills? Christ says, no, life is more than those things. Yeah, but God, you don't understand. I got to take two jobs to make it work. I got to work double hours. I got to make sure I can pay this. He said, life is more than food and clothes and house and rent. But for most people, that's what life is. Could you imagine living all your life, paying a mortgage, paying bills, paying rent, and then you're 85 years old, finally got the mortgage paid, too weak to climb the steps <laughs> to enjoy the house. The kingdom of God takes your focus of survival and puts it on living. Could you imagine an ambassador sitting in the United Nations around the table discussing the issues of life, what's going on in the world, and then he's thinking about, boy, I hope my kid gets some shoes this week. Thinking, well, you know, I, I left half of that meal there for my wife. I hope that's enough for the rest of the kids. I hope the light stays on. I mean, he's supposed to be in a, in, in, in a, in a diplomatic meeting, thinking about food. We do it all the time. He's so preoccupied by survival, we ain't got time to live. And let me tell you, friend, listen to me carefully, listen to me carefully. Your job is not supposed to be your source of life. Your job is an opportunity God gave you to use your skills, develop your character, to develop your personality, to become experienced in things with people and with, and with products and with machines. He gave you that, and then he gives you a little tip along with it. They, they call it a salary. That's not your source. Your source is God, and God can take care of you above and beyond your salary. But the kingdom works in a strange way. It only happens if you believe. There are people who got your money and can't get it to you because you don't believe it's yours. Let me tell you something. This, this blesses me. In the book of Ecclesiastes, it, it, it says, it says, <laughs> the wicked works hard and it stores up much wealth. And then it says, for the righteous to pay and take care of him. Now, when I read that, I said, now, that don't sound too good, God. So, yeah, that's good. In other words, there are people who got a lot of money, and it's yours. But it only works if you believe that. You got to believe that. I went to college with just one semester money. As soon as I landed in college, everything started working. Never had to write home for money again. Never, I, mean, I started sending money home to my parents. Praise God. I was the only student in school sending money home. Everybody else was trying to get money from home. How do you do that? Because people had my money. But my faith took the money and began to pull it toward me. And I had so many scholarships and so much cash, I bought a car in college with my own money. My faith activated my money in other people's pocket. The kingdom of God will take care of its citizens. Look at this last one here. For the pagans run after all these things. House, land, body, clothes, food. The pagans run after these things. And your heavenly father knows that you need them. So, you seek first the kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Thank you once again for listening to this message, as we hope that it has been a blessing to you. Our goal is to show you new paths and opportunities so that you can discover your purpose. It is your love, support, and partnership that makes Monroe Global possible. 
Please visit us online at www.monroeglobal.com for more product, partnership, or to join us at one of our live events around the world.